Hello, I'm Dr. Don Colbert, and welcome to Dr. Colbert's Health Report. I have with me today my wife, Mary. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I had a bag of marbles. Where's my marbles? I've lost my marbles. Don, oh, would you help me find my marbles? Oh, Mary, listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> today, we're going to be discussing a subject that's very dear to my heart. We're talking about memory loss, Alzheimer, and dementia. And what I found is, see, my father died of Alzheimer's disease, and I didn't have the information years yeah. ago that I have today. Now I have the information to not only prevent Alzheimer's disease, but to actually reverse most cases of Alzheimer's disease. You say, how can you do it, Dr. Colbert? We're gonna tell you how. But first of all, realize Hosea 4.6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We're going to impart to you that knowledge that can help prevent as well as reverse early Alzheimer's disease now, in many I, patients. I know that you have heard when you hear a diagnosis of Alzheimer's that that seems like the most horrible. And in the past, it has been the worst diagnosis you could get. But I wanna tell you something, after this show today, it's not gonna be so bad because we're gonna empower you with some information that you can do something about. You can take control. There are things you can do, but you need to know what it is because like the scripture says, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. After this show, you're gonna have the knowledge. Dr. Colbert is a world-renowned medical doctor who specializes in preventative medicine. He believes in strengthening the whole man, the mind, body, and spirit. Listen to Dr. Colbert empower you to overcome common illnesses through natural solutions. And now, Dr. Don and Mary Colbert. Today we are going to be talking about a subject that's really close to Don and my heart because his father died of Alzheimer's. So you have heard a lot of information about Alzheimer's out there. And the big information that most people hear is there is no hope. It's the one disease when you are diagnosed with, there is nothing they can do. And you say? Well, with late stage Alzheimer's disease, there's less hope. But with, with uh, mild and moderate cognitive impairment, which actually precedes Alzheimer's, and with mild Alzheimer's disease, we can many times reverse it, which is so exciting. You see, plus there are reversible types of uh, memory wow. loss Wait that minute. we reverse. Wait a minute, you just said reversible. Yes. If you have a B12 wow. deficiency, now again, if, you have, if you're starting to get memory loss, I tell patients, go see your doctor. We do a m mini mental status exam. It's just 30 questions, and we can tell right off if they're having mild cognitive impairment, moderate, severe, or even early Alzheimer's, moderate or severe Alzheimer's, we can tell. Wow. Also, we can tell by having them draw a clock, and we simply have them draw on a piece of paper a clock. Now, I don't have a clock in the room for them to look at. Okay. But we have them draw a clock and then uh, say, put the time at 1030. A person with Alzheimer's can't do it. They cannot do it. Wow. And there's also changes in the brain. You can actually do an MRI and you can see changes in the brain. There's other tests that just came out at the University of Florida. It's called the peanut butter sniff test. They find that one of the first places in the brain that degenerates is the uh, frontal temporal lobes, the frontal temporal lobes of the brain. So it affects the smelling. So they started a new wow. screening test for Alzheimer's where you just have a ruler and peanut butter and you see how far uh, or how close you can smell the peanut butter. You get a dollop of peanut butter, like a tablespoon. Now we're gonna do this we'll later do on yeah. in the program so Boop. we can show people how it goes. So Don, there's different types of yes. memory loss and Alzheimer's and in different degrees. But first, let's just discuss some reversible okay. types that we see a lot. And a lot of people don't right. realize, they think if I have memory loss, oh, I've got Alzheimer's. Not necessarily. It may be B12 deficiency, which is common. It could, and so just wow. checking a B12 level, as well as it could be uh, elevated homocysteine levels. Homocysteine is a toxic amino acid that damages the brain as well as the blood vessels. Oh. And so we can check homocysteine. If the homocysteine level is elevated, they probably have a mutation in the MTHFR gene. Don, that, that's a lot of information. I know, but we have the answer to it. Yeah. It's simple. Okay. Uh, five cents of supplements a day corrects it. Wow. That easy. Also, some people may have- Wait a minute. Five? Five cents of supplements. That's it. B12 and folic acid, that's nothing. Oh, this is exciting. It's a, the active form of folic acid, the regular form of folic acid won't work, and that's in what's in most multivitamins or B complex. They won't work for those people who have a mutation okay. in the MT MTHFR gene that has high homocysteine levels. Other things are excitotoxins. People don't realize wow. that your aspartame, your diet sodas you're drinking, diet things that you're drinking, your MSG, 
All of that are excitotoxins that damage the brain cells and excite them to death and literally start to damage and destroy blood, brain cells. Let me explain something to you. If you're 30 years old and older, chances are your brain is beginning to shrink. You, your brain typically shrinks about 0.5 to 1% per year after the age of 30. Everybody? Normally, everybody. Everybody. But we have ways to actually prevent that shrinkage. And we're gonna talk wow. about those two. But other things that can cause memory loss, mycotoxins or mold toxins, infections, Lyme disease. We see a lot of Lyme disease and that causes tremendous inflammation in the brain. Certain foods create inflammation in the brain. One of the worst are trans fats and polyunsaturated fats. Polyunsaturated fats make up about 90 plus percent of all the fats we consume, the type of fats we consume. They're very inflammatory for the brain as well as certain heavy metals like mercury and cadmium and lead and aluminum. They're toxic to the brain. Don, with all the things that you have just said, I'm sitting here, my head is spinning and I'm going, is there hope for any of us? But also sleep <laughs> apnea. A lot of people out there with sleep apnea, they are starving their brain cells of oxygen. Wow. And simply doing a sleep study and putting them on CPAP corrects it. I cannot tell you how many people with sleep apnea with early dementia are reversed simply by put them, putting them on CPAP. Now, Don, I have seen patients that have come to see you as a patient that had early dementia and issues going on. And one lady I remember particularly comes to my mind, she, could, she had quit teaching. She, had, uh, she wasn't right. able to teach as a, a school teacher anymore. Her thoughts were scrambled. Right. And now she is completely back to school. And in fact, I had another who was a pastor and some of the signs we see with Alzheimer's wow. and other dementias, first of all, they have problems with memory, short-term memory especially, as well as thinking, and it really affects their words and speech. So this poor lady, she was a pastor, she'd be in the middle of a sermon and would literally forget what she was saying. And wow. she'd start rambling. And uh, wow. so what we did is we found that there was a food that was inflaming her brain. This is another thing I do. Actually, wow. a lot of you don't realize, but there's certain foods out there. I talked about fats, I talked about excitotoxins, but certain foods may inflame your brain. We have special tests to identify those foods. One of the main ones is gluten. Gluten inflames the brain of so many people. Wow. But you say, wait a sec, Dr. Cooper, what is gluten? <laughs> gluten is the main protein in wheat, any kind of wheat. It's also in barley, it's also found in um, rye. But wheat is in what's in bread, pasta, bagels, pretzels, cakes, pies, cookies. It's in everything. Wow. But you say, wait a sec, Dr. Colbert, you, didn't Jesus teach us to pray saying, Father, give us this day our daily bread? Aren't we supposed to eat bread daily at every meal? I love bread. It was well, Jesus' favorite it was, food. It probably was. <laughs> but let me explain something to you. Bread contains proteins, which are gliadins and glutenins. There's over 12 different subparts of gliadins. And they are very inflammatory to the brain for some people. And we have to identify those people. You say, wait a sec, Dr. Colbert, I don't have celiac disease. I'm not getting diarrhea. I'm not getting malabsorption. I'm not losing weight. Even if you don't have celiac disease, gluten can still inflame your brain. Now, what I did for this lady is I identified that she was wow. very sensitive, not allergic, but very sensitive to gluten. Wow. Because I check some of these markers. I can check transglutaminase markers. I can check anti-gliadin antibodies. I can check all these different markers to see if a person's sensitive to gluten. Extreme, she was extremely sensitive to gluten. I mean, extremely. I removed it from her, her diet. I put her on some brain healthy fats. Now what's interesting is the brain is 70% fat. So I put her on healthy fats like DHA, which realize the most abundant fat in the brain, of omega-3 fat, is DHA. Wow. And DHA, in some studies, can prevent dementia by as much as 60%. Also, I put on coconut oil. I put on healthy fats, monounsaturated fats, like olive oil and avocados. I put on our anti-inflammatory diet. Cut out, I cut out her grains, totally cut her grains out. It was absolutely amazing. Within three months, this lady was a different person. Her mem she was preaching again. Husband couldn't believe it. She was only about in her mid-60s. Wow. But also what I did is I checked her blood. I checked her B12 level. I checked her homocysteine level. And sure enough, she had a mutation in the uh, MTHFR gene. So I had to put her on the active form of folic acid and also put her on methyl B12, the active form of B12. Now, Donna, in everything that I'm hearing you say, 
I'm not hearing anything about drugs. I meds. didn't use any drugs. Now, what's interesting, let me explain to you right now. Okay. Alzheimer's disease is the number six main cause of death here in the U.S. Not we just haven't... the U.S., how is it globally? Okay, let me explain. Throughout the world, according to the World Health Organization, 44.4 million people in the world right now is estimated to have Alzheimer's disease or dementia. That's throughout the whole earth. Throughout the whole earth. Now, projected okay. estimates by the World Health Organization says that by 2030, there'll be approximately seven, over 75 million people in the world with Alzheimer's. But that's not all. By 2050, wow. according to the World Health Organization, there'll be over 135 million wow. around the world with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. You see, there are different forms of dementia. Alzheimer's disease makes up about 70% of dementias. About 20% are made up of vascular dementia or multi-infarct dementia, where the blood vessels get full and the brain get full of plaque. Other forms of dementia are frontotemporal dementia, which is PICS disease, about two to five percent of dementias. Some dementias due to Alzheimer's, excuse me, some, some dementia due to Parkinson's disease, which is another neurodegenerative disease. So again, dementia, there, Alzheimer's is the main form of dementia. But you say, why is it increasing so much and why is there their treatment? There is no effective medical therapy for dementia right now. Wow. But what we found is this. Because the baby boomers are moving into their 60s, now here's what happens. When a person reaches 65, their risk of developing dementia is one in eight. When that person reaches 85, their risk of dementia is one in two. In other words, the older you get, the higher your risk of dementia becomes. What we are seeing now are the baby boomers, which was the main, our main population, is now moving into their 60s when we start seeing more dementia. As a result, over the next 20 to 35 years, or 15 to 35 years, we're gonna see an epidemic of dementia, which right wow. now there is no cure for dementia, wow. or Alzheimer's disease, I should say. Now, Don, people hear the word Alzheimer's, dementia, you know, memory loss. Can you help us understand what, how, how does the medical community classify that? What really determines? Well, okay, for what? example, if a per, like I say, the majority of dementia is due to Alzheimer's. About 70 to 80% of dementia is due to Alzheimer's disease. And is that the shrinking where the brain just literally Right, just, just picture a raisin, picture a beautiful plump grape okay. and picture a raisin. Okay. That's similar to what's happening with Alzheimer's. We have accelerated loss of neurons and collection of an abnormal protein called amyloid beta protein. Now, I got to tell you this, folks. I got to say this. He is not reading a teleprompter. <laughs> he doesn't have any cards in his hands. This is all coming off this computer up here. Well, you blow me away, Don. Well, I'm sitting here. I have, you're just amazing. You're nothing wrong with your brain, honey. <laughs> well, praise God. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay. What we find is with Alzheimer's disease, it shrinks the frontal portion of the brain. That's where our main memory centers are and the hippocampus. It starts to shrink these key areas of the brain. This can be picked up by most MRIs, but a lot of, and so a lot of doctors, they'll start with a mini um, mental status exam and have them draw a clock and then that'll be abnormal. So they may send them over for a um, CT scan or MRI of the brain. If it shows shrinkage in these areas, it's generally due to mm. Alzheimer's disease. Now, now we, you're gonna, we're gonna make available to anyone watching, you can go to our website, drcolbert.com, and you're gonna have a list of these things well, we're on gonna have, we're, we're gonna put the main signs, like the main signs are of course problems right. with short-term memory. Right. And that's what we saw with my dad 10, 15, 20 years before he developed it, short-term memory started to go. He had problems in judgment, he used to get confused, and he had problems with words and speaking. He would stop in the middle of something he was saying and forgot what he said. He would repeat the same story over and over and over. Right. And he'd ask the same question over and over and over. I think we all know somebody like that. It's and then true. he would also, uh, he would, it, it showed a change in his mood and his personality. He became very um, depressed. He also became withdrawn, extremely withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And he became um, it, it just, he wasn't the same father. He used to. Be, my father used to always be whistling. I would go mm -hmm. in the kitchen all day long. He'd whistle. He was the mm -hmm. happiest man. But but when he developed Alzheimer's, he no longer whistled. Yeah. He he just he wouldn't talk. And when he would talk, he'd say, "Get me uh, what you call it over there." And mm -hmm. so again, he would forget simple words. And it got to the point eventually. You say, "Well, how do I know if it's Alzheimer's or just 
mild or moderate cognitive impairment. Right. Well, it's just, instead, he would try, he'd pick up the TV remote control and think it was a phone. He'd put the keys in the refrigerator and things like that. But Confusion. That he'd forget in a direction if he was driving, he got easily lost. Exactly. So he, there, there's going to be a list on our website of things that you can look at if you know someone right. that's starting to exhibit this. And, and he became very paranoid. It's not a, it's not a simple uh, like you come because a lot of us have a lot on our plate. We have a lot going on. It's not like uh, where did I put my keys and I can't find my keys. That's not. No, That's no, no. not what we're talking and about. And he'd forget names, but he not only forgot names, but faces. I mean, people right. that he had known for years, he wouldn't recognize them. Wow. Not only forget their name, yeah. but forget he'd ever even seen them. And he'd known them for many, many years. Right. And uh, so again, this is what we see. He became very paranoid. He used to hide things. He'd hide things from my mom. And she'd find things under his mattress or stuffed up on the top shelf of the closet and things yeah. like that. So again, these are and signs layering. and symptoms. He would layer and put multiple clothes on. Right, top of one they another. have a tendency to layer. So these are signs and symptoms. But again, your doctor can, or we can put on our website, the uh, mini mental status exam. I think, I think we so should do I, that. Uh, yeah. that's, that's simple. But let me explain something to you. You say, what can I do to prevent it? We're going to talk about what simple things we can do to prevent it. Uh, one thing that I uh, Simple, study, did you hear that? Simple. Very simple, okay. and this is what's so like exciting simple. about this. I like simple. But let me explain. There was a thir there's been a 35 year study out of Cardiff, uh, Cardiff University found they actually fa looked at um, lifestyle factors over the last 35 years, and they found there are five key lifestyle factors that prevent Alzheimer's by 60 percent. Now these are things that we can do wow. without taking supplements, which is amazing. That's cheap. Mm. Okay, first of all. They said regular exercise, but it has to be aerobic exercise, not just once a week. It can't be stretching and flexibility exercise. It has to be aerobic exercise. Get your heart rate up. Get your heart rate up. It's best to do it again, 30 minutes a day, five days a week, just walking, S simple as walking. Another thing, no smoking. Smoking damages the brain. Another, low alcohol intake. Alcohol damages the brain, excessive alcohol. It's one of the main toxins for the brain. Wow. As well as, Low body weight, not healthy body weight, low body weight. And you say, how is that? Well, low body weight prevents diabetes. And you're gonna see mm. now a lot of researchers since 2005 have reclassified or class further classified Alzheimer's as type three diabetes. We have type one diabetes, type two diabetes. Now they're saying it's type three diabetes because wow. the brain cells are insulin resistant. So we really need to talk about this. Yes. And finally, the, la the fifth, was a healthy diet. So they say if you follow four out of those five lifestyle factors, your chance of, de of developing Alzheimer's will decrease by 60%. But we have to wow. discuss, we exercise is a given. Now you say, why exercise? Why is it so important? Because it was more important than any other factor. Oh, so being set at, just sitting around and with the remote control on the couch, that's not gonna do it. Your atrophy in your brain. Yeah. If you're a couch potato, okay. your brain is shrinking, accelerated wow. shrinking. Your brain is, your grape-like brain is becoming a shriveled up raisin, okay, when you're sitting. Wow. You need to visualize that. Now here's what, here's what they found. This is what's so exciting. When your brain, before 19, the mid-1990s, they thought that the brain cells, brain cells were the only cells in the body that could not regenerate. All the other cells of the body can regenerate, even the bone, even the heart, but the brain can't. I've, I remember hearing that. But That's in the mid-1990s, mid wow. they found that brain cells are actually what they call have plasticity, which means the brain cells can be repaired, restored, renewed, and you can actually grow <laughs> new Dendritic that is such and good news. You can actually grow new axons and dendrites in your brain. Because wow. people with Alzheimer's, literally, it's like a tree that's been pruned, like branches cut off. Wow. And so they don't have the connections. But there's certain things that'll regrow these connections. One of the most important is exercise. Aerobic exercise, like walking. Now, here's what happens. When you are exercising your body, you, you not only bulk your muscles up, you are literally bulking up your brain. Your brain is getting larger. The reason is because of the uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. I know that's a mouthful. But literally, when you exercise, your brain secretes a chemical that triggers your brain cells to secrete and produce more axons and dendrites and connections and restore, renew brain cells when you exercise. So you're, you are literally, instead of shrinking your brain, you're growing your brain larger. Studies are showing that people who exercise regularly have significant less shrinkage of the brain. 
Wow. That's what's so that powerful That explains why your brain is so huge. Listen, let me ask, because you exercise all the time. <laughs> and that's why I'm losing my marbles. <laughs> okay. I don't ever do it. No, I'm better. I, no, I found my exercise. The key is doing what you love, though, in an exercise. How often do you have to exercise? You need to do it f at least five days. Now, start again three days a week. If you've never exercised, please see your doctor. Make sure you can exercise. And start off slow. And start off maybe five or ten minutes a day just walking slowly. Gradually work up to 30 minutes five days a week. That's ideal. 30 minutes. 30 minutes five days a week. That is the best okay. thing for your brain. Now, again, there's so many things I've got to get into because we have found if you have elevated blood sugar, if you have insulin resistance, you have just signed on the dotted line for Alzheimer's disease. Mm. Diabetics are two times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease, two wow. times. Wow. But you say, I don't have diabetes. If you're insulin resistant, you are more likely to develop Alzheimer's. Wow. We gotta discuss this. I have to discuss the fats that are important to the brain. I have to discuss these supplements that are critical for the right. brain. So there's a lot of things that we're gonna have to go in other hey, shows to you explain. you know what? We're gonna do two shows on this for sure. We're not gonna be able to cover everything in detail during this program, but we're gonna give you a good appetite. And the infections that affect the brain. I see a lot of people have brain problems through infections, which we have the answers. I'm gonna show you what to do. Oh, you don't have great. to go and take antibiotics. That causes mycotoxins toxins that affect the brain. Wow. So again, we've got to get you the simple information that's going to make a profound change in your brain. Now, the next part of this program, we're going to get into the supplements. So don't you go away. We'll be right back. Do you have brain fog, trouble forgetting things like what you ate this morning or where you set your keys down? Did you know there are real natural solutions that can help kickstart your brain and protect it from daily oxidative stress? Dr. Colbert has put together a comprehensive elite brain package that's designed to support cognitive memory and reduce oxidative stress. Dr. Colbert's extensive research in brain health has made it simple for you to keep your brain healthy. Each elite brain package includes one 30-day supply of living omega-3 with DHA, one 30-day supply of brain on, one 30-day supply of brain defense, along with Dr. Colbert's seven doctor's orders to overcoming memory loss study guide. You can get all of this right now for $99. Call right now to order your elite brain package. The number is 1-800-433-4484. Don't miss this great opportunity to turn your brain on. Call now, 1-800-433. 4484. Okay, we're excited about this program, Don, because this is the part where you're going to break down for the people things that they can do to empower themselves against this disease. Uh, natural means, because everything that you're talking about so far did not, does not include drugs. Well, we've talked about the most important thing, which are lifestyle changes, especially our aerobic exercise, but we have to, next program, get into a healthy diet because you can't expect to, uh, to feed Alzheimer's without the healthy diet. It's got to be a low-carb diet. It's got to be an anti-inflammatory diet. We have to identify which foods are inflaming the brain. The other thing that we find are certain key supplements are real important for preventing memory loss and for reversing inflammation in the brain. See, Alzheimer's and dementia is simply inflammation in the brain. And there was a study out of the University of uh, Pittsburgh, and what they did is they checked a uh, 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 suburb, the people over 65, they took so many of these people and they actually found that 17.5 out of 1,000 of those people went on to develop Alzheimer's oh. based on what they, you know, they, they just developed that. They took a similar suburb of New Delhi, India, and out of 1,000 people over 65, they found only 4.7 out of 1,000 developed Alzheimer's. Now, Realize in India they have one of the lowest rates of Alzheimer's and dementia in the world. And you say, why? 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 It's like a quarter of what we have here in the U.S. Wow. It's because they eat curry ah. on, a, on a regular basis, and curry contains coconut oil and coconut milk. Wow. So I we love find curry. curry is a powerful antioxidant and anti inflammatory that helps prevent Alzheimer's, according to studies. Now, we have a real good uh, curcumin curry uh, product, which is turmeric. because yeah, not everybody can take, eat curry. So right. for people who don't so like it. So we have a supplement, and also okay. they can find uh, some good curries and curcumins at health food stores, but we have a good one. Another supplement that helps is DHA. DHA is a form of omega-3 fats, and studies have found that people who consume omega-3s, especially DHA, on a regular basis have about 60% less 
uh, risk of developing Alzheimer's disease because the DHA is the number one omega-3 fat in the brain. Right. And so we need to have a high potency DHA and also needs to be with low lipid peroxides. A lot of the fish oils and DHA products unfortunately contain a lot of lipid peroxides because once, uh, once those are encapsulated, they start generally oxidizing, lipid peroxidation. So that's why it's important to find one with low lipid peroxides. We have a real good omega-3 that's high DHA, low lipid peroxides. And also in some of the health food stores, they'll have high DHA concentration with low lipid peroxides, really important. Another supplement real important for the brain is D3. They have shown that if a person has low D3 levels, they're at an increased risk of developing Alzheimer's and dementia. So simply going to your doctor and having them check the special blood test for D3, the 25-OH D3 level, and optimizing that level to 50 to 80 will help prevent Alzheimer's. That's real simple. The mechanism involves usually decreasing inflammation. Yeah. And also it's important to take B12, but not just B12, but you want the active form. And you active. want it sublingual. Okay. The active form of B12 is not cyanocobalamin, it's methylcobalamin. So oh, the, methyl. 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 Like ethyl, but methyl, methyl okay. cobalamin. You take it sublingual because it goes, it's, it's absorbed immediately into the bloodstream. Oh, okay. And another real important we find is the active form of folic acid. I find a lot of my patients, I do genetic and genomic testing on them, and they have a mutation in the MTHFR gene. When they have this mutation, their body can't adequately convert the inactive form of folic acid to the active form, and as a result, Many of these develop high homocysteine levels, which not only damages the heart and blood vessels, but it damages the brain and associated with memory loss. Mm. So I recommend a, a multivitamin with the active forms of the B vitamins, as well as the active forms of the other vitamins. Oh, Real wow. important for brain active, health. Active, think active, okay. Now we also have simple screening tests for dementia that uh, not only can you see your doctor and get the mini um, mental status exam, but you can also do what we call the sniff test with peanut butter. And this test came out, is developed at the University of Florida. They take a dollop of peanut butter and they hold it up to your nose with a ruler and they find that especially the, it's the left nostril. If you have to uh, put the peanut butter closer to the left nostril than the right nostril, you're at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. It's wow. the left nostril. So the closer that peanut butter is to the left nostril before you smell it, the higher the risk of Alzheimer's. Now you can't do it if you have a cold or sinus issue. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Now you say, how does that work, Dr. Colbert? Because they found that the frontal temporal area of the brain is one of the first regions of the brain affected by Alzheimer's disease. That is amazing. And also peanut butter is a pure odorant, which means you're actually stimulating the first cranial nerve, the olfactory nerve, and that's a simple little test that'll tell, they're actually investigating this as being a screen for people with cognitive impairment advancing toward Alzheimer's. Wow. So if you have cognitive impairment, or if you can't smell that peanut butter, it's critical that you watch these programs and follow these instructions because the next show we're gonna be talking about diet, the anti-inflammatory diet, and we're gonna show some key fats that protect the brain. We're gonna talk about our favorite exercise as well that we really enjoy. Absolutely. Because that's a key factor, is finding something that you will do on a regular basis and that you enjoy. We know that this has been a lot of information, but you can go to our website at drcolbert.com and you can get a lot of the information that we have shared with you today about uh, symptom signs and all kinds of things that you can do to head off this terrible disease of Alzheimer's. We would like to give you the opportunity that if you have never made Jesus Lord, that this would be a great time for you to do that. It's a real simple thing. All you have to do is bow your head and really mean it, mean it in your heart to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Ask Him to come into your heart and give your life to Him. Do you know it's a real simple thing to do? And if you do this, we want you to let us know that you have prayed that prayer. We have some information we want to send you and give to you by simply going to our website. We hope this program has been a blessing to you. We're gonna to continue to teach you what you can do to reverse the symptoms of memory loss. Remember, the only thing better than a divine miracle is walking in divine health.